Do you ever wonder how the wealthy seem to have an unshakable grip on their riches? It's not just luck or inheritance, although of course that can play a part. It's really about sticking to certain financial habits that consistently keep their bank balances bulging. I am revealing financial habits that the wealthy use to stay rich today on the show so that you can become financially fit too. I'm stripping away the mystique and laying bare the practical everyday strategies that keep that money flowing. That is what we do here on the Her Paper Root Podcast. We talk about all of the interesting ways that you can make money online, specifically in the creator economy or any type of business that you are building. And on today's show, we're going to be talking about the unspoken truths to the hard-hitting tactics to financial resilience and prosperity. So let's pull back the curtain on the financial maneuvers that keep the well-to-do well doing well. You're listening to the Her Paper Root Podcast, a show all about money and entrepreneurship with host Chelsea Clark. Chelsea is a marketing strategist and the founder of HerPaperRoot.com. We encourage you to fearlessly tackle your wildest goals. We know that as your own boss, you can deliver your unique message and make more paper. You just need a plan. Here's your host, Chelsea Clark. Happy New Year. We're always thinking about self-improvement and what we can do to get on our paper route, make that money, improve ourselves, improve our financial situation. I absolutely love studying habits and studying how successful people live their day, what they do for their routine, the habits that they've developed to support that success. And now it is really important to stress here that having a routine was not what made my business successful. Starting a routine was something that I was allotted the privilege of having once I had money. Things like getting sober, skipping events, putting my head down and creating offers to sell and to grow a community, that is what I did. That is what I focused on and I really didn't have work-life balance at the time. I really didn't have a routine. I got up and I did the work and I really wasn't focused on my mental health or my physical health at the time when I started building my business. I was just like, go, 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 push, push, push. I felt a lot of pressure to build a business quickly because I did it while I was on maternity leave. I had a newborn baby and I felt like there was this big clock over my head ticking down to when the time was going to be up that I either had to go back to work if my business plan failed, I'd have to go back to the workforce. Or if I made it work, I wouldn't have to go back to the workforce. I could just continue on with my business. And fortunately, it worked out that I was able to continue my business and not have to go back to the workforce. But that said, once I had money coming in and once I had some of my time back after that first year, that first startup year, that was when I was able to start thinking about having a morning routine, having a night routine, sleeping more, taking care of myself more. So I just don't want anyone to think that if you're starting a business, it all is just perfect and easy and you have all this work-life balance. Before I dive into these uh, financial habits tips, I want to read a quote to you by Alex Hormozzi, who wrote $100 million offers and $100 million leads. He says, people work, sacrifice, then get rich, then get time, then fill their time with weird routines, then forget how they got rich in the first place, and then tell others the weird routines made them rich rather than what they did. So I think that it is really important to keep that in mind when you are planning your million dollar routine and just remember that things can fall into place when they need to. The most important thing is the work, the effort that you put in, the strategy that you put behind the business, the funnel that you're building, those kind of things, that's what's gonna make you rich. And having a good routine, that's gonna help you stay productive, that's gonna help your mindset. Those are all good things, but at the end of the day, it is your strategy that is going to make you super wealthy. Okay, so let's dive into these tips. First things first, we got to talk about the importance of living below your means. Now, living below your means doesn't mean that you get to miss out all the time. It just means that you are choosing financial freedom over fleeting pleasures and just being really mindful of how you spend. Personally, I used to splurge on clothes and shoes and things that there's no ROI from. You don't get any money back from your those types of purchases. And then I realized that really peace of mind from 
from saving and seeing the numbers go up and up and up in my bank account and being able to reinvest that money into revenue generating assets, that was far more satisfying than another dress. So think about it. If you enjoy a cup of coffee and a snack at home every day, instead of spending $27.40 each day at Starbucks, you would have $10,000 saved by the end of the year. So if you find yourself reaching for that credit card a little too often, it's probably time to make a change and you can start adapting small habits that really snowball and pay off big time. So slash the unnecessary, embrace thriftiness, and watch your financial health blossom. Next, you're going to want to pay yourself first. Now that term, pay yourself first, that sounded like a fancy phrase to me until I actually tried it. And the idea is just really simple. Save before you spend and not the other way around. Pay yourself before you spend any money. I earn a salary from the company that I own, but anyone can do this even if you are an employee of someone else's company. Every payday, whisk away a portion into your savings before you even think about spending it. It's like throwing a life vest at your future self. And now this one is super important. Don't let your money sit idle. Don't let it just sit in a low interest savings account. You need to make your money work for you. So just like you shouldn't let your talents go to waste, we don't want you to let your money sit idle and go to waste either. I once left a chunk of money in a low interest account and eventually I realized later how much more I could have earned if I had it elsewhere or if I had applied it to something that would make me money back. Like if I had used that money to buy a website that was earning $1,000 a month, that would have been an income for me over time and something that I could also resell for more money. So think of your money as an eager employee. Just put it to work in high interest savings accounts, stocks, bonds, or buy websites. And if you want to learn more about buying, growing, and selling websites, I am your girl. This is my specialty. Go to herpaperoot.com and you can see all of my free training resources and guides everything that you need to know about getting into the business of website investing. My next tip, long-term gains over short-term. In the world of finance, there's always buzz, hot tips, market panic, the next big thing, but I've really learned to tune out the chatter and focus on solid long-term strategies. It's like sifting for gold, ignore the pebbles, and keep your eyes on the real sparkles. Next, don't pay interest. Paying interest is like giving away your hard-earned money for nothing in return. Maybe you get a little bit more time to pay that thing off, but why pay money just to use money? I once got caught in a credit card spiral and I vowed never again. Now I use credit wisely and I pay off balances every week to dodge those sneaky interest charges. And I know it could be tempting to buy things on a payment plan, but really avoid payment plans at all costs. Unless you are buying a business where you're, you're using seller financing, that can make more sense. But if it's just like a product, some tech gear, even makeup can be sold on a payment plan. Just avoid it and pay for something in full. Next, tracking your spending is really important. And people who are super wealthy, they don't just let their money come in and out without them knowing what's going on. They track their spending. Because if you've ever felt like money just evaporates, I mean, I think we've all probably all been there at some point in our life. I really felt like that before I started tracking my profit and loss, my income, my expenses. And then suddenly those innocent little coffee runs revealed their true cost when you see it all laid out in front of you. By monitoring your expenses, you can adjust and align them with your true priorities. It's like a reality check for your wallet, and I think we all could use that once in a while. Now here's a really important one. You might want to write this down. Time is your most valuable asset. It really, really is. It's the only thing that you cannot get more of unless you are outsourcing things to pay people to give you more of your time. What you spend your time on you don't get back. So start saying no to low value tasks, start prioritizing your time and hiring help. Outsourcing tasks and declining time-wasting activities just means more time for what truly enriches your life. And as you guys know, this show is called Her Paper Root Podcast. 
her being women, paper being money, and root or route, depending on where you live, that is the plan to make the paper, the plan to get the money, the plan to put your business in order. So planning for financial well-being is crucial. Setting life and financial goals gives you a roadmap to success. I remember feeling super lost until I sat down and outlined what I wanted my future to look like. And now each financial decision is a step towards those goals. So I mean it when I say create a vision board, hang it where you will see it every day and just take strides daily to work towards those goals. And of course, we couldn't talk about financial habits without mentioning budgets. I don't even like saying budget because it feels so restricting and like, ugh, like who's trying to boss me around and tell me what to do with my money? That's how I feel when I think about a budget, but it really is a game changer because when you craft a monthly budget, it's like the compass that guides your financial fitness for the whole year. It's very important. It really is. So every month I do sit down with my coffee and I map out where each dollar should go, where I want to invest, who I'm paying for, what services they were offering my business in the last month and what we could do to scale up or maybe pull back if sales aren't as high as they were at a previous season, you know, when you're a business owner, you're going to ride the waves. It ebbs and flows. There's going to be higher earning months. There's going to be lower earning months. And you really just have to be aware of how much of a budget you have to use. And that comes from keeping a budget. (laughs) So it's really like giving each penny a job. What can you do for my savings this month? What can you do for my investments for my business growth this month? And trust me, knowing where your money is coming from just really makes all the difference. A budget doesn't have to be restrictive. It actually can be freeing. It's like having a personal financial boundary that guides your spending and your saving. And I really have found peace and security in knowing exactly where my money is going. Some people advise that you should save up to three months uh, ahead in your emergency fund, like you would have enough for your mortgage or your rent saved up so that you and your family could eat. You'd have enough for groceries for three months. I actually think that three months savings is not enough. If there actually was an emergency that you needed, if you could go for six months or more savings, like you don't have to have it tomorrow. I mean, you start saving for that and then maybe a year from now you have that six months savings. You do it slowly. So if you can stash away a little bit of your money each month, put it aside into a separate bank account. So a bank account that you don't have a debit card to, you don't have easy access to. So you can't just spend it without thinking about it. Like you'd actually have to go into the bank and make a withdrawal in person. That just make it harder for you to get access to. That's going to be better for your emergency fund, just keeping it away, keeping it out of sight, out of mind, but always adding to it each month if you can. Another financial habit is to practice patience and save for big purchases. So patience really does pay off. If you're dreaming of a big personal purchase that your business can't write off, so you would have to spend your personal money, then start saving for it. Don't buy it on a payment plan, like I mentioned a moment ago, where you would have to pay interest. So for example, if you buy some sort of gadget on impulse and you go on a payment plan, you're probably going to regret those monthly payments. So it's really better to save up for big purchases and then pay in full if it's something that isn't a business expense your business can't write off. It's about the satisfaction of paying in full and really just being able to say, I earned this. Another financial habit that the wealthy people of the world swear by is to always consult with their financial advisors. Regular meetings with a financial advisor really do keep you on track, much like regular checkups with the doctor or the dentist in your life to keep you healthy. I make it a point to review my financial health and strategies with an expert who can offer tailored advice, and you're going to want to find someone who works in your state or your province because every place that you live is going to be different. So don't just take blanket financial advice from people online. You really do need to have your own personal advisor who is well-versed in your type of business and tax situation. And that leads me into my next point is about understanding your investments tax benefits because knowing the tax implications and potential gains of your investments really helps you avoid surprises. 
I've made it a habit to understand the nitty gritty of my portfolio so I'm not caught off guard come tax season. And that's another separate savings account that I have each month as I scroll away a little bit of money each month. I'm just putting it aside that is going to pay my taxes at the end of the year. Now this tip is to have a side hustle. So my blog started as a side hustle and now it's my full-time career, but whether you're pet sitting or crafting, a side gig really can fast track your financial goals, especially if you are still working a nine to five or you have a career that you want to continue working on, you should still have a side hustle. Another financial habit is to make investing a habit. Investing often is like planting a garden. It grows and it blooms over time. I started small, but as I watched my investments grow, it became rewarding and really just a part of my financial routine. This financial habit is about passive income because who doesn't love earning money in their sleep? People always say that. (laughs) But really passive income is the dream for many. And when you're an online creator, passive income is just one of the revenue streams that you should have working in your business. I've learned to invest in avenues that allow my money to grow without constant attention from investments like ad revenue that comes from my blog. Passive income streams are the financial equivalent of planting money trees in your front yard. (laughs) So set them up, nurture them, and watch your garden grow. For example, I have built funnels that sell my digital products on autopilot. I love talking about sales funnels and all of like the nitty gritty inner workings that go on behind the scenes of a business that your customers have no idea. It's just, it looks so seamless and perfect to them because you put a well thought sales funnel to support everything. I teach sales funnel building. If you want to learn from me, you can check out my sales funnel course at herpaperroot.com slash courses. It's a really great resource resource that walks you through literally every step that you need and every little thing that you need to think of when you're building your sales funnel. That's at herpaperroot.com slash courses. And that link also takes you to a page that has all my other courses too. And a lot of them are free or very affordable. So if you're interested, go and check that out. But continuing on with our financial habits, another financial habit that is very important is to train yourself to become a financial whiz. The rich know that knowledge is power, especially when it comes to money. So continuously seek to learn about finances, about starting a business, about building passive revenue streams, building sales funnels, launching courses, And you can do this by reading books, attending workshops, and listening to podcasts. Every bit of knowledge helps you make smarter decisions. And because you're here, you're listening to Her Paper Podcast, you are right on track with this stuff anyway. Another financial habit that the wealthy all practice is they are very aware of how much time they're spending on social media. They don't be doom scrolling (laughs) and they really try to avoid the comparison trap because scrolling through social media, it's so easy to feel behind and also it can be a big time suck and you just end up wasting your day. But remember what you see on social media, it's all curated highlights. Really try to focus on your own goals rather than what you see from other people's perceived success. Your financial journey is unique and you just got to embrace it without, you know, worrying about what anyone else is doing. And finally, take educated risks. Taking educated risks can lead to substantial rewards. Do research. Look at what options are out there for you and investments and things that you can get into and see if it's right for you. Not all risks are going to be worth taking, but with the right knowledge and a bit of courage, some can lead to great opportunities. Personally, I have done very well from buying websites, working on them a little bit, so generating more revenue to them, improving their digital products, getting more traffic coming to boost up the affiliate revenue and the ad revenue, and then reselling the website for profit. You can sell websites for up to 40 times what that website earns per month. So if you have a website that is earning $1,000 per month, you could potentially sell it for up to $40,000. So you can see how that can add up pretty quickly. And that's why website investing has been my favorite way to make my money work for me. 
but do your research. It's not going to be right for everyone. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It takes effort. It takes attention. It is not 100% guaranteed. It'll always work out. It really comes down to you, what you do once you acquire that business to make it make more money. So that is actually why I love website investing so much is because it gives you control. It puts you in the driver's seat. Unlike something like if you are investing in stocks, because there is no control. I can't control the stock market. Once that money goes, I can't make that make more money. I have no say in what that company that I've invested in goes and does when it is a stock. Whereas when you purchase websites and now you 100% own that company, you get to decide what you want to do to make it make more money. You have full control. So if you want to learn more about website investing, check out my blog at herpaperroot.com. I have tons of guides, resources, free training, workshops, all sorts of good stuff that you can learn more about it and see if it's something that you might want to get into. And you can always reach out to me, DM me on Instagram, say hi, ask me any questions you have about this episode or about making money online in general. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening today. I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for tuning into the Her Paper Root podcast. We hope you found this episode helpful. If you did, please say so by leaving us a review and be sure to share this episode with your friends. For more entrepreneurship resources and to connect with Chelsea, swing by herpaperroot.com. Now go make something.